Hello, welcome to this mess on my table. Hopefully we'll clean it up during the course of the video. But I've set out several games here to show you examples of my designs to help explain my design process. I'll talk about what's important for me for designing a foam core insert for board games. And then I'll talk about my step-by-step -step process and what I'm thinking about during that process. The first thing is no baggies. I don't like baggies enough so that I've named the company Baggies Be Gone. Uh, I don't like dealing with plastic baggies for setup and tear down. Uh, you can see here in Maracaibo, they give you a blue plastic bag to put your legacy components in to save the game along with the clear plastic bags they always give you. Uh, but instead of the blue plastic bag, I've just taken a blue piece of paper. I can set it in the card box and just place my saved game components on top of that, eliminating all necessary baggies or making all the baggies unnecessary. I suppose. Um, I think felt bags with drawstrings, I think these can be incorporated very nicely into inserts. Uh, Castles of Burgundy, for example, where you would put the tiles in the bags and use the bags during gameplay, drawing random tiles from them. I think this is nice uh, because you can use the bags while you're playing. You don't need to take the components out of the bag for setup and put them back in for teardown. That's really what I'm trying to avoid. So point one, baggies be gone. Uh, number two, you can see some of my games here. I prefer to store my games vertically, so I need to preserve the organization when the box is tilted or turned upside down. Uh, this is easy enough to achieve while you are designing. Simply do not leave any room between the components and the top of the box. So everything will be flush with this bottom section of the box and the cover will go on so nothing can slide around and move around. Uh, number three, we'll say sleeved cards. I prefer to keep my games in good condition, so almost everything is sleeved. So when I'm designing, I need to think about leaving extra space for those sleeves. Um, I admit I use very thin sleeves because if I used high quality thick sleeves, not everything would fit. There are some games with so many cards and so little room it would not work. Uh, but I think a very thin sleeve is better than no sleeve. And I'm willing to make that sacrifice uh, in order to stick to my next point which is consolidation. 
most of the games here have all the expansions, but you can see there are only a few where I've had to keep the expansion boxes. Most of the games I'm able to take all of the expansion and fit them in a single box. This is important for me in order to save shelf space. So I think Terraforming Mars is a good example of this. I have the dual layer player boards here. I also have the promo cards. I think all the promo cards. And I have all of the expansions as well. Uh, Prelude and Venus next and Colonies. Uh, you can see there are two game boards here, the base and Hellas and Elysium. Uh, actually, I do not have Turmoil right now, but you can see there is space designated for those components. For example, here, uh, this space is for the party tiles, and I can get rid of these beginner corporations because who uses those? And then there would be space for the uh, event cards. So I'm able to consolidate a lot of expansions with the base game in these designs. Uh, something that really helps with that is not using foam core for the tray bases. If you're interested in that, please look at the video we have on bases. Uh, so you can see there's a little room here, but it's okay. When the cover goes on, uh, these pieces will move around a little, but not enough to disorganize everything. They'll stay in this area because the boards are flush with the top and this tray is flush. So they're only able to jump around in this small space. So everything will stay organized. I think the next point we can talk about is saving foam core. I see a lot of designs where the first thing they do is cut a big piece of foam core like this and put it at the bottom of the box and then cut four walls like this and put them here. So they make one big tray, the same size as the box. And then they take the uh, smaller trays and set them in that larger tray. Uh, to me, this seems like a huge waste of foam core. If you prefer this design method, please comment below. Why do you choose to do this? Um, perhaps I'm missing something and it's actually uh, very reasonable. But as far as I'm concerned right now, it seems like a waste. Also, you don't need a tray for every single component. Uh, you can see here, these larger boards are not in a tray. Uh, they will slide around a bit like this, but not enough to disorganize anything again. 
also the cards here. Here. And the uh, airship tiles. They may slide around like this, but again, nothing will be disorganized because the surrounding trays will not move. Uh, I'll show you Teotihuacan. You can see under here are the wooden temple tiles. I didn't feel there was any need to make a separate tray for these. They're not going anywhere because uh, they're surrounded by other components and everything will fit very snugly. So think about what you actually do need trays for and what you don't need trays for. Uh, another example I'd like to show you over here, code names. I have code names, duet, and pictures in one box. And I've done it with two foam core trays only. So it's very important where everything is in the box, how it's arranged. And that arrangement can, um, can eliminate the need for additional foam core trays. We have all the agents here with the word cards. Uh, we have the pictures agents here. And we have the key cards here. This tray is measured for the key cards. Uh, this tray holds the pictures, as you can see, like this. And with the rule books on top, Everything is flush, and the components are not going anywhere with only two foam core trays. Uh, so think about that. How can you save foam core, uh, and how can you arrange the components within the box? The last point I'd like to talk about, and maybe the most important, well, they're all important, uh, is thinking about organization of the components. How are they organized in the box, which we've already talked about a bit, but how does that organization facilitate setup and tear down? And how does that organization facilitate gameplay? Uh, I'll show you a few examples here. We'll go back to Teotihuacan. Uh, I have this tray. Uh, in this tray are all the components you need for setup. So I can take what I need for setup and then put this tray back in the box and not deal with it during the game. Uh, if you have limited table space, I think this is an important point to keep in mind. Uh, depending on if you're playing with the Automa, you may or may not need this box. Uh, I've separated the Obsidian from the other resources, because you may or may not need this depending on the expansion. Uh, and this also, these houses for the Isle, Isle Road, Avenue, yes, the Avenue of the Dead. Uh, these are set up, so you don't need this tray. So you actually have very little uh, in terms of trays actually on the table, which I really like. 
Uh, what are other examples I can show you? Oh, let's move over here. Here is Le Havre. I've designed the trays a very specific size. So you can just take them right out of the box and put them directly where they need to go on the game board. And the treasury here also goes here and it fits very nicely. So everything fits on the table and then when we go to tear down, it also fits very nicely in the box. With La Havre again, uh, you only need to take out these cards for setup. You put the cards on the board and then you're done. So there's no reason to have this big tray on the table. It's a tray for all the setup components. Let's quickly put La Havre away because I want to show you something else. Uh, the next thing we can look at is Maracaibo. So with Maracaibo, here is the board and here's the insert. And again, it's no accident that that's measured to fit there. It's no accident that this is measured to fit here. And it's no accident that this is measured to fit there. So as you're designing, think about how does everything fit in the box? In the box. There. And how can things be more functional on the table? Uh, so these are all the things that I think about while I'm designing. Um, I'll talk about the process now as you watch me put all this other stuff away. So the first thing I will do is completely empty the box of all the components. And then I will put in the very large things like the game board, uh, the rule books, and large things like this, player boards, and I'll just play with these, move them around the box, and experiment uh, what arrangements seem to work well. Um, I'll start incorporating other components as well. So for example, uh, this, these are uh, all of one type of component. So I would measure what is the total length of this stack? Uh, what is the height? What is the width? And I'll measure that for every type of component. And then I will just put all of these inside the box and start to move everything around and arrange things, figuring out how everything is going to fit. Uh, while you're doing this, remember you need to keep in mind uh, how much space do you need to leave for the foam core walls and for the bases. Uh, this is a long process for me. Um, an average game, say maybe 
like Le Havre, it can take four to six hours of just moving things and measuring. Uh, with a larger game, like I think with Teotihuacan, I spent maybe eight or nine hours uh, just moving everything because I just wanted everything to fit perfectly and be logical for me in every way. Uh, so when you are uh, getting our designs, our Baggies Be Gone designs, that's what you are paying for. You're paying to skip that design process that we have done, which can take a considerable amount of time. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I promise to respond to every question. And if there are other topics you would be interested in, also comment on that. And I will think about uh, making future videos on those topics. Thank you for watching. Go be inspired and make some cool inserts. Thank you.